Now that patch 2.5 is live on ladder and non-ladder, we're finally getting our hands on Terror Zones, the new mechanic that's being brought into Diablo 2 Resurrected. see down in my chat right now it looks like corrupted tremors have struck kuros bazaar ruined temple and the disused fane and for the next hour every game that you make will have these areas as terrorized zones but what exactly is a terrorized zone? Terror zones are easily identifiable by the terrorize that pops up when you enter into the area. You'll also notice in the top right that the area level is now listed. My character is level 84, so this is now a level 86 area, and it's indicated as being terrorized. And then when you actually hover over any monster in a terror zone, you'll notice that there is a new icon, and that gives you the indicator that that monster has in fact become terrorized. So these base monsters are going to be level 86. Any champions that we run into will be level 88 and any elite monsters that we run into will be level 89. A terror zone is going to change both the area level and base monster levels according to your character level. So as you increase in level, the areas are going to get higher and the monsters are going to get higher level as well, bringing a little bit of additional challenge as well as opening up a lot of different ways of farming for loot and a massive change to how experience is going to be got in Season 2. After I've completed the Bale quest, so the sixth quest in Act 5, I will be able to opt into and make a terrorized game. So when I'm going to make my game lobby here, you'll see that we can indicate whether or not we want it to be terrorized. So once I make this game, it's going to take me as the game creator's level to determine the level of the monsters that we're going to run into. Walking into the lobby again, we get the same message that we already saw. You'll be able to type in slash terrorized, and when you do that and hit enter, it will give you a new prompt for which area is currently terrorized. Looking at how the numbers play out in the example of our level 94 character, the base monsters and the area level that we go into of any area that is terrorized will be minimum level 96. Champion monsters will reach up to level 98 and unique, super unique and boss monsters will reach up to level 99. Just a couple things to note about how this mechanic is going to work. First, a monster is never going to be lower level than it was initially. So if you're a really low level character walking into a terrorized zone that's normally higher level than you, it's not going to scale down to your level. It'll always keep its minimum level and then increase if you are higher level. When the game creator leaves, any other people that are in the game when the terror zone swaps will now be used to determine what the area level and monster levels therein will be. Because monsters are increasing in level, their treasure class will also upgrade. So what this means is that normal base monsters who previously couldn't drop every item in the game will be able to do so as long as they are a sufficiently high level, that being monster level 87. So your character would have to be level 85 for every base monster in a terror zone to be able to drop every item in the game. Now, while this won't change the treasure classes of any monsters that have unique or hard-coded treasure classes available to them, it is going to change what items they're able to drop. So some monsters weren't high enough level to be able to drop certain items, but they were able to drop the base item. So while their treasure class hasn't changed in any way, they are going to be dropping items they previously couldn't. That increase in the area level is also going to change what items that you can drop out of chests, different poppables, armor, and weapon racks. And just to give you an idea of all the items that will now be able to drop off of base monsters, again, as long as your character is minimum level 85, is something along the lines of Azurath, Tyrael's Might, Crown of Ages, as well as Stormlash, Mangson's Lesson, that Tomb Reaver, and then something like a 41 to 45 Vita Suffix Skiller. This was something that only previously could drop off of Bale, Nilithak, and Diablo in Hell, but now, as long as your character is level 89, every Grand Charm that you find can be a 45 life skiller. Oh, and not to mention the addition of the new Sunder Charms, but we'll get to that in just a second. While the game isn't drastically different, there is a bit of a challenge increase that comes along with Terror Zones as well. First and foremost, which I think is the most important, is that the hit chance, so your ability for a melee character to be able to hit a monster, is highly dependent upon the difference between your character level and the monster level. And since in Terror Zones, monsters are always going to be higher level than you, you're always going to be at a slight disadvantage for being able to hit them. Based off of some real quick napkin math, it's going to attribute to about a 3% chance 
less often of hitting if the monster is level 99 compared to what they previously would have been in an area level 85 zone. Monsters base life, base experience, and base damage output is also directly related to their monster level. So higher monster level means that they're going to take more damage, give you more XP, as well as dish out more damage. A lot of different uniques and super unique monsters in the game will gain access to auras, and that aura is directly based off the monster level as well. So we are going to see higher level conviction aura, fanaticism aura, and any Anything else in between. Different unique modifiers like Fire Enchanted and Lightning Enchanted also deal damage based off the monster level, so these are also going to deal increased amounts of damage. So when that Fire Enchanted monster explodes when it dies, you want to make sure that you're standing clear. Wild Tower Zones are already going to be an amazing place to farm for the ability to get your hands on additional loot, as well as additional experience. There are of course the Sunder Charms that are now going to be in the game. These charms have their own mechanic, which basically means that no monster will be immune to your damage type, and we have an entire post on Max Roll devoted to explaining how they work and what the implications are for builds moving forward when these are available in Season 2. Now these are a ladder only droppable item. While Tower Zones are going to be a non-ladder, Sunder Charms will not. And to be able to get your hands on a Sunder Charm, you need to kill a champion, unique, super unique, or boss monster in a terrorized zone. So if the Chaos Sanctuary were to become terrorized, while base monsters couldn't drop a Sunder Charm, all of the seal bosses, any champions or uniques, or Diablo himself will be able to drop them. And there's one for every damage type, including fire, cold, lightning, poison, physical, and magic damage. Lastly, there are the list of areas that can become terrorized. Using the tower in the Black Marsh of Act 1 as an example, the entirety of the tower is a terrorized zone. So that means that tower levels 1 through 5, including the Countess, will be terrorized monsters. Looking at Tower Cellar 5, if you just click the drop down quickly, you'll see whether or not it contains anything particularly interesting. This can include things like super chests, golden chests, the waypoint itself, so you know that you can travel to it quickly, or in the case of the Tower seller level 5, the Countess herself. Also, you'll find Elite Density in Hell. This is the number of Elite Packs that you should expect to run into, so if you ran into the Maxim here, you would just want to dip out and go to the next game, so you don't waste your time full clearing the area. Also, we'll show you any of the relevant immunities that the based monsters in the area will have, so if you happen to have your hands on one of these Sunder Charms and you are a build that deals these types of damage, you'll know whether or not you want to slot it on very quickly. Opening up the Monsters tab, we have the Hell Monster stats right at the top, but we also include Normal and Nightmare if you're still farming there with Terrorized Zones. Then it'll give you a breakdown of the type of resistances and what monsters are immune to, what damage types in that area. Lastly, we include the stat block for any super uniques or bosses that are in that area. So here you see that the Countess is always Fire Enchanted as an Elite Affix, in addition to the other ones that she'll get in Hell, and she's going to be boasting immunity to fire and cold damage. Since Terror Zones include a lot of areas that weren't typically considered meta farming zones, make sure to have this resources at your fingertips so whenever a new one becomes terrorized, you can dip in here very quickly and see what you're going to need to be able to handle it. In the game right now, Cross Bazaar, Ruin Temple, and Disuse Fane currently terrorized. Let's go look at them in the max roll resource. Cross Bazaar has a waypoint in it, so you know you'll be able to get to there very quickly. That is an elite density of 7 to 9, so I shouldn't expect to see more than 9 elite packs in the area. And typically the monsters there are immune to physical, fire, and cold. If you're just starting off and you happen to be a a solo damage type build, you might want to ignore the Kuros Bazaar in this particular example, but if you want to take another second just to get a better idea of what you're looking at, open up that table and look at the type of resistances that they have. You'll notice that multiple monsters have massive unbreakable immunities to cold damage, whereas only a single monster type is either immune to fire or to physical damage. This means that if I'm a physical or a fire build, I can probably expect to be able to kill the majority of monsters in the area, and I might have to skip a particular immune. Going into the Ruined Temple, this is an area where you can complete one of the quests in Act 3, and it also has a super unique in it by the name of Battle Maid Serena. You'll see that Magic, Fire, and Cold are not great options for walking into this place. And again, while there's only one monster that's immune to magic and one monster that's immune to fire, multiple monsters are going to be immune to cold. Any other damage type looks like it would do pretty well in this area, 
Serena, but let's also take a look at that super unique. Here we go. We have Battle Maid Serena. She's always extra fast and has spectral hit. She is going to be immune to cold as well as her minions, but any other damage type is going to do really well against her farming in this zone. Lastly, looking at the disused Fane, there's nothing else really to note in this area. It only has an elite density of about four and it's a very small area, so you might be able to very quickly farm multiple monsters in here. And the same damage types are not going to do well, notably magic, fire, and cold. The last thing I really wanted to touch on is the big change that this is going to have an impact on, and that is the gain of experience, as well as the 99 grind in season two. Now with terror zones, any champion and elite monster is either going to be equal to or higher level than you, considering champions go up to level 98 and unique, super uniques, and bosses go up to level 99. This means that no monster in a terror zone will ever be hitting the initial XP penalty, because they will always be less than five levels beneath you. So you're going to gain 100% of their experience for that part of the calculation. And since champion unique monsters are already worth multiples of their original experience, and you can increase that even further by getting party bonus and having multiple people in your game simultaneously, this is going to drastically increase the experience per hour that you can expect to get as long as the terror zone is a high value one with good monster density and easy mobility. There you go. That's everything that you need to know about terror zones walking into patch 2.5 and then into season two of Diablo 2 Resurrected. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below if anything else needs to be cleared up or feel free to come over to the Max Roll Discord and ask us in any of the Diablo 2 Resurrected channels. Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy hunting out there and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.